So that's what it's like when the goals win a couple of games in a row. That's what it's like when San Diego wins finally. Hey, guess what? San Diego won a couple of games in a row. How about that? And Pavel Regenda, he's back, y'all. We'll talk about that and the World's Juniors on today's Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Gulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. Been covering hockey for over a decade. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. It is Gulls Thursday, and I waited to record this because I wanted to watch World Juniors. I wanted to see Team USA play. Then I wanted to see Team Canada play. And by the way, Team Canada destroyed Austria just right now. I'm recording this just as the final buzzer clicked off. 11-0. So we'll talk about World Juniors in the final part of this particular podcast because I will talk about the Ducks in a couple hours. But first, let's get to the last couple of games for the San Diego Gulls, including last night's just demolition of the Henderson Silver Knights. Well, I shouldn't say demolition because Henderson almost came back. But we'll talk about that in a second. First, let's talk about the last couple of games. Last Friday, San Diego was looking to break a 12-game lose 12 games lost in a row. They lost a dozen games. This was the last game before the Christmas break at Tucson. Woo! I will say Rocco Grimaldi really fired up everybody. Actually, there was a couple of guys that I could kind of see on the telecast that was trying to get everyone just really riled up. One of those was Rocco Grimaldi. Another one of those is Nicholas Bruyard. I thought Bruyard was trying to like get everyone going. And Hunter Drew. Hunter Drew. I haven't said enough about him, so I'm going to talk about him for about 30 seconds here. Hunter Drew, I think, has been one of the hardest working players on this San Diego team. And frankly, someone that we don't talk about often enough. So I'm going to give him his just due right now. Hunter Drew started off as a defenseman a few years ago, and going back to 2020, going back to the pandemic year, it was around that time that Hunter Drew was, you know, being experimented with, and this was, this was back when we had a different coach, when Joel Bouchard was coach, and even before that, when Coach Deneen was heading up the goals, and I could even see it there, that Kevin Deneen was trying him out for a few games at a time and Hunter Drew just rolled along with it and said yeah sure like I'll move up the reason for that is because the goals were trying to experiment with 11-7 then when the pandemic hit that's when he was starting to convert to defenseman full time but that was more of a necessity because of the pandemic going on at the time and there was too many defensemen not enough forwards so Hunter Drew was the guy that drew up and ever since then he's I I would say he's thrived in that position and watching the last couple of games with Hunter Drew moving up I could see the hard work that he's put in I could see how much he's worked on his skating I could see how much he's worked on his forecheck and I could even see how hard he has worked just moving pucks along and finding the perfect spot and also being a good screener when he moves up and forward. So I just wanted to give Hunter Drew his just due, but he looked good as far as like a lot of the little things in that game. He did get two apples on this one at Tucson. He looked good, folks. He looked really good, but he was trying to fire his team up. He tried to light a match under all their behinds. And that's what happened. Grimaldi scored. Then Colton White finally scored. Yeah! And then after Tucson scored a couple to tie it up, it was all San Diego on the final 30 minutes of that game. Pavel Regenda, he scored in the power play. Then he scored again. Then Frank Hora. So this was kind of just a last-minute signing because San Diego's had a lot of injuries. Uh, Frank Hora, Travis Howe, those are all guys that are just part-time guys right now, mainly because of injuries and call-ups. So... 
you know, there's a there's a lot of shuffling going on, a lot of signings that happened recently. But also that last goal of the game, David Cotton, empty netter, good for him. You could tell he was excited. And I could tell that just a lot of the guys around those younger ones are trying to help him out. Grimaldi being a veteran presence right there. I liked seeing how excited Grimaldi was for that goal. And I love seeing how excited Hunter Drew was for Frank Hora's first goal. Who, by the way, Frank Hora, first one of the season, not just that, his first professional goal. Yeah, he had played with the Monsters, with the Phantoms, with the Crunch, with the Checkers. He had never scored a goal until last week in 58 games. He had not scored until late in that game. So I, I'm proud of the guy for finally getting his first goal, for finally getting his. He's been kind of one of those stalwart, just tweener defensemen, not tweener NHL, AHL, tweener between the AHL and the ECHL. And for him to finally get a goal above the ECHL level, good for him. So good for you, Frank Horror, getting that first goal. And God, they, they were excited. And I purposely rewound that about 10 times to see who was the first one there, either Regenda or Drew. And they were both right there. So good for him. He he looked pumped. So final score, 6-2 to two at Tucson. And this is me giving praise to a lot of those guys. You know, got to give praise to Hora just being that guy that has worked his ass off. He has. I, I love that goal. And I loved watching that game. That was the perfect way to go into the break. San Diego needed that game right there. They needed that in the worst way. <laughs> ah, finally. I was afraid they were going to go into the break losing 13 in a row. I really was. But luckily, that did not happen. Whew. All right. We're going to head into the first intermission. Talk a little bit about last night's game against the Henderson Silver Knights. We'll get to that on the other side. But first, let's talk about Bet Online, which is the one place that has you covered, the one place that we trust. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before, including the National Basketball Association. Who is going to take down the defending champions, the Golden State Warriors? Could it be the Celtics? Could it be the Phoenix Suns? There's a bunch of teams that are gunning for the Warriors right now. You also have the NFL. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Well, the Rams aren't going to repeat because they are eliminated. So who's going to take over as the Super Bowl champion? Those lines are already up as to who's going to win the Super Bowl. And of course, you have the National Hockey League. Who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Who's going to win it? Could it be Boston? Who knows? But check out Bet Online either on your mobile device or on your laptop. Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network, and please gamble responsibly. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Locked On Goals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You're locked in with J.D. Hernandez. All right, so let's talk about last night's game, which I didn't actually watch till this morning for reasons which I still can't talk about yet. I mean, there there will be an announcement about other stuff going on. But last night's game at Pachanga Arena. First off, shout out to Bobby Cressy, the excellent organist who is the main organist for the San Diego Padres, but also does a plethora of San Diego goals games. And I, I miss going down there, Bobby. So I will make my way down to San Diego again this season. I promise. But... <laughs> That one started off with San Diego firing on all cylinders. This was their first game back at Pachanga Arena since before the holidays. And they showed up in a big way. This will also be their last home game in 2023. They've got a pretty decent road trip. And they've actually got to go into the cold next week. We'll talk about that shortly. But let's go into what happened last night. It was Glenn Galdan, Bryce Kindop, and do we have a MDZ sighting? Yeah, we do. Michael Delzato. Michael Delzato finally scored for the San Diego goals. This was his first goals goal since the trade. He had scored a couple, 
before with the Charlotte Checkers. And he finally got on the board with San Diego. This was his third game as a San Diego goal. And that goal made it 3 nothing. You're thinking, well, this one's over, right? Well, yeah, it's kind of, it seems like it's over. Maxim Marushev scored for the Silver Knights. But then Austin Strand. Yeah, remember him? Austin Strand. He finally scored again, his second of the season. Austin Strand, who, by the way... I don't think he belongs in the AHL. I think he should be playing in the NHL. There was something really awesome that Forever Mighty put out recently about who was the only player, aside from like so-and-so, that had like the highest game score. And Austin Strand was the answer to that. Austin Strand's a good defender. And he can score when need be. So why aren't the Ducks playing him? Why isn't he in Anaheim? Not saying that Anaheim's doing horribly on defense. I'll talk about that later on tonight. But Strand has looked excellent in San Diego. There's maybe only two or three defensemen that I would say are doing a decent job in San Diego right now. Maybe maybe three. Nicholas Bruyard, Austin Strand, and Drew Hellison. That's it. I'm only going to give Michael Delzato the benefit of the fact because he is a new San Diego goal and he had struggled with the checkers at times. Going to look at Sean O'Brien's chart, his AHL chart, Michael Delzato was definitely in the bottom left corner of that chart. But he's helped this goals team out a little bit. I mean, two points in this game. He was the first star of the night for what it's worth. But, you know... I still give him a little bit of time to adjust to the system. Then in the third period, on the power play, by the way, <laughs> Pavel Regenda. Okay, I want to talk about this shot for more than a few minutes, but I'm going to leave it to a minute. So Regenda, on the power play, you see him kind of streaking in from a pass from MDZ. And Regenda on the right side just rifled one. I mean, he just went snipe city past Laurent Brossois, went above the shoulder, and live, I don't know if it looked like a goal, live, you could see, here's what happened. He celebrated. Regenda celebrated early. His hands are up in the air. He's cheering. You could see a broken stick on the ice, and they called that no goal. I'm like, okay. And I didn't see which ref it was, um, but... You know, the ref immediately said, no, no, no goal. He waved it off. And Regenda's kind of looking around like, what? Like, that was a goal. Like, he was looking around. So play continued until the whistle. And Regenda was begging, begging, begging. Like, no, that was a goal. Check the replay. So they checked the replay on that. And it was for sure a goal. It was a good goal. So Regenda's fifth. That made it 5 to one San Diego and at that point in the game I thought oh this one's over this one's absolutely over <laughs> no way San Diego's gonna blow this lead right it's impossible they're not gonna blow a four goal lead in eight minutes right <laughs> right <laughs> uh, oh okay oh okay so, so they scored one on the power play Henderson did so all right it's now five to two all right not too bad Still seven minutes left. They can't blow this, right? Oh. Maxim Maruchev scored. Ooh. All right. Now it is a two-goal game. All right. Oh, let's pull the goalie, says Henderson. Oh, here we go again. Oh. Oh, crap. Brendan Brisson scored? Oh, shoot. Okay. So now it is a one-goal game with half a minute left. I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. <laughs> but luckily, time ran out. San Diego won it 5-4. to four. Whew. That got a little too close for me. I, I, I kind of figured that San Diego would win this game. But that one felt a little too close for my taste. And I think that's something that San Diego needs to work on. Kind of in the same way that Anaheim was guilty of doing this. They took their foot off the gas. They figured, we have a four-goal lead. We can take our foot off the gas. 
not be super aggressive. And look what happened. They allowed three goals in such a short amount of time. I bet if there was an extra two minutes on the clock, Henderson could have completed that comeback and possibly won it. Thank goodness for the buzzer. So San Diego has now won two games in a row. Their first winning streak in God knows how long. <laughs> which brings their record to 8-22-0, which is still good enough for last place. They are still a ways away from the next lowest teams in the conference, which would be the Grand Rapids Griffins, the Bakersfield Condors, and would you believe it? The Chicago Wolves, the defending Calder Cup champions, are tied for last in their division. Yeah. All right. We're going to head into the second intermission and talk about World Juniors. Yeah. Stay locked in. And now here's a brief PSA from the NHTSA. So you're driving along, right? And, you know, you're hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. And then... You start to head out, and you think of calling for a ride, but nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay, right? No big deal. I mean, what are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, lose your license, lose your job, total your car, maybe you kill someone. Well, everyone knows the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly, but that doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome back to Locked On Goals, which is under the umbrella of Locked On Anaheim Ducks and part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I didn't give them their just do last time, so I'm going to do it right now. It's the last Locked On Goals of the season, and it's a San Diego podcast, so I got to give my shout out to San Diego's very own Mad Hat Hucksters. This is the Mad Hat Hucksters playing in the background. I, I like I like this band a lot. You know, one of my buddies is the band leader, and I get to use the music. So. Once again, the Mad Hat Hucksters, San Diego's very own. Check out the Mad Hat Hucksters on Instagram. I know they're all over the place, but yeah. Pandemic Christmas from a couple years ago. Still one of my favorite Christmas songs to listen to, by the way. So yeah, I thought I would let that play out a little bit right here. All right. And yeah, we kind of still are under a pandemic, sort of. But, you know, I, I think we're pretty much over it by now. All right, so let's talk about World Juniors. I purposely waited to record this because I wanted to see how that game would go against Austria. I knew they would win because Austria has been, well, they've been awful this season. Just terrible. (sighs) Yeah. Austria has still not allowed, I don't think they've allowed a goal in this tournament. And look what happened tonight. 11 Nil. Austria has not scored a goal in this entire tournament. They have not scored against Sweden or Czechia or Canada. So, yeah, 11 nothing. And, oh, wouldn't you know it, Connor Bedard did something awesome. He scored two goals. He scored his 14th goal for Team Canada at World Juniors. And, according to Scott Wheeler, tied Jordan Eberle's all-time Canadian record. In two World Juniors. Connor Bedard is only 17 years old, folks. He's not even 18. And he's already tying records. He's going to break the record during this tournament. I guarantee that. Because Canada will have at least two more games. With that victory, they've clinched a spot in the quarterfinals. So they've got one more game to play against Sweden. That one will be tough. Then they've got a quarterfinal match against likely USA or maybe even Switzerland. Hmm. We'll see how that one goes. But right now, Sweden's top of the group, then Czechia, then Canada. So Canada would be the third place team in Group A. Unless they can beat Sweden 
and Czechia loses their final game. I don't see that happening. So I see Canada having a first round match against the USA or Switzerland. That's what I see happening. Germany, they're down there towards the bottom. But hey, you know what? Germany's not a horrible team. They're not. Austria, <laughs> they've allowed 31 goals in this tournament. 11 of them to Canada. Also want to give a shout out. Guess who scored the 11th goal for Team Canada? Tyson Hines. Tyson Hines looking pretty good. Also looking decent is Olin Zellweger, but we knew that he would look good. He is one of the best defensemen in Team Canada. And also, how about Adam Fantilli? Looking pretty good. But man, that, that second goal. Well, the first goal from Connor Bedard, kind of a snipe shot from a bad angle. And then the second one, kind of a tip play, garbage play in front of the goalie. You like those kind of goals. Connor Bedard is a special player. Which is why I'm happy when the Ducks win. But at the same time, when you have a Connor Bedard and and an Adam Fantilli right there, you can't help but think, God, the Ducks would be so much better with one of those guys. Either Bedard or Fantilli. Man, if there was any year to tank any year at all maybe this would be it maybe yeah they weren't they weren't having that <laughs> but we'll talk about the ducks in a little bit as far as bedard he finds open lanes he creates offense for himself i don't know what more can be said about Connor bedard and i feel like i need to have a couple of guests on to talk more about bedard's game in general and what he can bring to a team like the ducks but yeah he's he's looked just ever so amazing, as he should, as he absolutely should. He's leading everybody in points, and it's not even close. Connor Bedard is leading all skaters with 14 points. The next highest is Logan Stankoven with 7 points. So he's doubled whoever's in second place. Yeah. Much like the Ducks, where Team Canada is built around only a few players, so are the Ducks. And in a way, so are the goals. The goals are built around only a few players right now, and that's it. Yeah. All right, so that's kind of just a small little update on <laughs> Team Canada. They have, a, they have one game left. Canada has one game against Sweden on New Year's Eve. That's going to be a big game then they have a quarterfinal match. So once we get into the quarterfinals, we will talk a lot more about World's Juniors next week. But just one final note on the San Diego goals before we wrap up this particular podcast. Upcoming schedule. They got a four-game road trip coming up. So first, San Diego goes up to Henderson starting tomorrow night. They have a game on the 30th against Henderson. And then they play New Year's Day. That's January 1st at 2 p.m. That's at Dollar Loan Center in Henderson. And then they go into the snowy, snowy cold. They fly out to Milwaukee, hopefully not on Southwest, to take on the Milwaukee Admirals. Those games are Friday, January 6th, Saturday, January 7th. I'll remind everyone on that schedule next week as well, but just want to tell you what the four-game road trip was like at Henderson, but at Milwaukee. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. It's going to be cold out there, folks. All right, that's going to do it for this particular podcast. Again, thank you for listening, and thank you for just sticking with me. We have another show coming up very shortly. In the meantime, this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Amazon. So check us out there. You can follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the night. Stay tuned for more as we talk about last night's Ducks game. Please remember to be kind out there. Be kind to one another. Be safe out there and ducks and gulls fly together. <laughs>